Hi everyone, welcome to Python Tutorials. In this video, let's look at various categories into which our machine learning problem falls into. And I'm going to only look at supervised machine learning because unsupervised machine learning is typically, uh, for example, uh, k-means where you're looking at patterns in your data, right, using clustering algorithm. So here we are talking about uh, supervised, which means you have uh, labeled data whether it is images or structured data, but you are trying to achieve certain tasks using the labeled data. And they typically fall into two primary broad categories. They are regression and classification. And within classification, there are binary classification, multi-class and multi-label and semantic segmentation is also part of classification. So let's take a couple of minutes to quickly understand what we mean by these. And starting next tutorial, let's focus on one of these uh, problems code it and try to understand this by uh, writing you know a, line, a few lines of code in python and then uh, uh, looking at a specific example so first of all regression regression means uh, you're trying to predict a continuous outcome on the value okay so if you have a bunch of uh, uh, variables let's say on on your x-axis this can be for example age of someone and on the y-axis you're trying to predict something and uh, it could be house prices right so if you have a continuous outcome because the outcome in this case the house price can be uh, can be a continuous number it, it's not just uh, you know black or white it's not just zero or one it is a continuous number so this is what a regression problem is and the continuous outcome of course is typically a numerical value I already mentioned that housing price is uh, uh, an example and stock values can be another one, right? Stock price. Uh, uh, and, and stock prices can be even more. It's not just a regression problem. These can be time series problem, okay? Which is, again, uh, part of regression. But again, we're not going to focus on this application uh, in, as these part of uh, series anyhow. What type of algorithms are used as, uh, for regression? Well, we already looked at linear regression as part of our traditional machine learning, support vector machines, logistic regression. We already covered this topic, right? In addition to that, random forest, we have uh, extensively used this for classification. Of course, it can be used for regression. In fact, in uh, in the next video where we look at regression, let's actually do, uh, uh, do artificial neural network like deep learning and also random forest and compare how the result looks like. But any of these algorithms, these are the primary ones that you would uh, encounter when it comes to regression type of analysis. So uh, now moving on to classification, I already mentioned classification falls into like uh, a few categories, but at a high level, classification is a predictive modeling problem where a class label is predicted. Okay, that's what a classification is. Is this a dog? Is this a cat? Right? So a class label is predicted and it's not a continuous numeric value that we're trying to predict. So the outcome is a categorical value, meaning it belongs to a single or multiple predefined classes. Like I mentioned, is this a cat or is this a dog? And typically this is a finite set of classes. This is not like in regression, it can be, it can be, a, it, there is no limit. Okay, the outcome can be a continuous numerical value here. This is a categorical value, meaning by definition belonging to a few, uh, a few set of categories. That's it. And typical example again includes, okay, uh, infected cell versus uninfected. And is this a dog or a cat or a bird? So there are many types of classification again, uh, classification algorithms. Uh, logistic regression can be used to classify random forest. We have used this quite a few times in the past. Support vector machines, naive base, and again, uh, right now our focus is on deep learning. So of course we can use deep learning for classification. Now, when it comes to different types of classification, there's binary classification, multi-class, multi-label, and semantic. And let's quickly, I mean, even though the names are very intuitive, Let's go ahead and quickly look at what these are, starting with binary classification. Here, the binary classification refers to those tasks where you only have two labels. You can think of this as uh, almost like anomaly detection. You have like one group that's normal, the other group that's not normal. Although anomaly detection is uh, a, another type of classification, but binary is very close to that. You have a normal class and you have an abnormal class. You have uh, uh, uninfected and you have infected, right? So there are two possible classes and usually the normal class is given a value of zero. The abnormal class is given a value of one, but it doesn't matter. 
So here are uh, a couple of images, and again, you'll download these images from this. Uh, uh, we'll get we'll get to this, how to download, where to download, when we get to the binary classification video, uh, uh, upcoming one of the upcoming videos. But uh, this is a great example of binary, right? So you have one image that you can clearly classify as infected where the two choices are either infected or not infected, right? And this one falls into not infected. So this is binary classification. Now, when you look at multi-class, it's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, multi-class classification is, again, a machine learning classification task where it's not just two classes, but more than two classes. There are many possible classes. And the outcome is exclusive outcome, mutually exclusive, meaning if it is a cat, it cannot be a dog or something else. It is a cat. That's it. It, if it's a dog, it's just a dog. Okay, so this is, even though this is multi-class classification, each outcome belongs to only one of the many classes that it can fall into. Okay, uh, this is usually not very clear, especially at the initial stages of your uh, deep learning experience. And the outcome is probabilities of for each of the available classes. So for example, if you have cat, dog, and something else, right, of four or five different animals, then it's going to give you a probability of that image belonging to cat or a dog, right? And it can be 0 0.92 cat and 0 0.1 dog. So we look at the majority and we say, okay, this is a cat then, okay? So an outcome is assigned based on the class with highest probability. And uh, uh, again, I gave you cat dog example, but think of uh, all the organelles for those biologists, all the organelles within a cell. So you look at this and you want to classify this into one of these multi-class. And the outcome is good in this case, it's giving me that this is mitochondria with 91% confidence or 91% probability that this is mitochondria, 3.4% that this is a nucleus and 4.3% uh, that this is a lipid, which usually appears dark in these electron microscope images and others are very low probabilities as you can see. So this is typical output of a multi-class classification where you have one majority class, hopefully with high enough confidence like this. So we can say that, uh, you know, this is definitely mitochondria. Next, multi-label classification can be a bit confusing. So let's uh, spend again a few, a couple of minutes understanding this. Multi-label involves predicting zero or more class labels. I guess that doesn't mean anything. Let me explain that. In multi-class classification, an object or an image in that case can fall into one mutually exclusive class, that's it. If it's a dog, it cannot be a cat. It cannot be anything else other than the dog class. In multi-label classification, it can belong to multiple classes, okay? And uh, image can belong to multiple classes. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that makes sense to you, so let's go ahead and explain that. Someone gives you this image and they say, okay, what, what class does it fall into? Does it fall into mitochondria class? Does it fall into lipids class? Or what class does it fall into? Well, it, given the choices, the image here falls into nucleus, mitochondria, lipid, lysosome, and ribosomes. Maybe you have an image of, of, of a cell where you do not see lipids or lysosomes you know, clearly, or even ri ribosomes, clearly. So in that case, it can be only a nucleus and mitochondria class, okay? So I hope I hope this, this, this makes sense. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, another example, like for example, you have, uh, uh, you, you're working with satellite images, for those of you uh, from, from uh, working with satellite uh, type of images. Now you have uh, a civilized area, right? I mean, urban area, sorry, civilized, an urban area where you can see uh, roads and buildings and uh, green grass. So in one patch, you can label that image as uh, if it has roads and buildings, that image as roads and buildings. But you move and then you see a park and then you can just say, okay, this is uh, greenery, roads and buildings, move on. This is something else. So in each image, you have multiple labels. This is a multi-label classification problem, okay? This is not very common in, uh, uh, at least in microscopy, but uh, just wanna make sure you understand what this is. Now, semantic segmentation is the most common uh, image processing task that microscopists or any scientific image, in, I would say in most scientific images, this is a very common task. And this is where we are referring to classifying every pixel, not just an image. 
Remember, when we say multi-class classification or binary classification, we are trying to classify an entire image into a class. Hey, this image is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, parasitic image. This image is, uh, you know, a clean cell. And this image is a dog. And this is a cat. Here, we are saying not just this image, but these pixels belong to cat or something. So this is classifying every pixel in an image into one or more classes. So here is an example. You have an electron microscope image and these areas where we are labeling them here, these are all mitochondria. So this is semantic segmentation. I'm only classifying pixels where I have mitochondria, everything else I'm calling it background. This is binary semantic segmentation. If you have uh, multiple classes, often common in material sciences or geosciences or even remote sensing, right? You have buildings, roads, and uh, green grass and so on. So this is multi-class semantic segmentation. Here it's showing mineralogy, different minerals. The, the dark area is background or, uh, or pore or air and red is uh, mineral number one, yellow is mineral number two, green is mineral number three. So you have like each pixel representing classified in here. And this can be very useful if uh, you want to do percentage analysis, like what percent of my area is covered by a certain mineral, right? So that's where semantic segmentation can be very useful. Another variation of semantic segmentation is called instance segmentation. And it's, it refers to the segmentation where objects are separately identified. So here, if you go back, here, all of these are mitochondria, but it's not telling me that this is mitochondria one, two, three, four, five, and so on. It's just saying that all these pixels in white correspond to mitochondria, right? So now, instant segmentation is an extension of semantic segmentation where we do semantic segmentation but it also tells us something about individual objects or individual objects are separated so here is an example different raw images semantic segmentation in the middle like showing mitochondria in white and object separation like instant segmented objects or mitochondria down here the advantage of this is now that I have individual mitochondria as separate objects, all I need to do is just go perform certain analysis of these objects and then I get all types of uh, uh, morphological measurements already done on these, uh, uh, on these objects. So instant segmentation can be very, very useful if you are interested in object level analysis. Again, it completely depends on your application, whether you want instant segmentation or semantic segmentation or multi-class or binary class. But these are the typical, typical uh, forms of uh, classification or, uh, or regression that we, that we encounter as part of uh, scientific image analysis or scientific data analysis. So uh, starting the next video, let's actually go ahead and look at each of these approaches in Python and then understand this to the next level. So thank you very much. Again, please subscribe to this channel so you're notified when those videos get uploaded. Thank you.